to yet another episode of Meet the Finalists Alive. I'm your host, Robin Neal, here with hair influencer finalist, Brad Mondo. Amazing. I appreciate you so much for taking a part of your day to come and chat with us. I got to know everything about the details of the birth of your beauty career, ex Mondo, all of that. So you ready to get this interview rolling? I'm ready. Let's do it. To begin, got to know who Brad Mondo is. So can you tell me a little bit more about where you're from and how you got into the hair space? Yes. So I am, I mean, you can consider me an entrepreneur, an influencer, a hairstylist. Um, I grew up in Boston where I worked at my dad's hair salon um, from the age of like, I think it was 15 onward to about 18 and then I moved to New York City. Um, but that is where I obtained all of my hair knowledge and everything I kind of know today was um, born in that salon. I would, I would sit in our back room with a mannequin head and just braid all day and like do perms and, and color the hair and just experiment while my dad was busy in meetings. So I had a lot of time for myself to just play around and that's kind of where it was all my love for hair was really born, uh, was in those those back rooms during the meetings with a mannequin head just playing around. So yeah, it's been a long journey since then and um, a lot has happened, but you know, humble beginnings. <laughs> what are some of the things that he taught you as you began your journey and then also throughout? Yeah, I mean, my dad taught me so much. Um, a lot of it was about how to be an entrepreneur and run a business. Um, he was really into the business aspect of hair, um, hence why he had his own salon. But he also did hair as well, but it was more like focused on how to run a business and how to make money. And I think I, I learned a lot about those aspects rather than so much about hair. Um, I also had a lot of people in my life uh, working at the salon who would also teach me um, the fundamentals of hair color all day. And I would, I would literally just stand in the back room and um, wait until somebody comes and mixes up their color and be like, what are you mixing up there? What do you, what do you got going on? And they'd be like, oh, well, I have, you know, the 20 volume with 7N and 8B. And I'd be like, oh, wow, what does that do? Um, so that's kind of where I got my hair knowledge. But my dad, um, you know, he would tell, he would tell me things like, keep it simple, stupid, or like, you don't get nothing for nothing. Like those are the things that I remember that he would always constantly tell me that really influenced my career today. Um, and, you know, he never gave up and he always um, strived for more and, you know, always wanted to provide for my family. So I think I just learned the fundamentals of money and building a company through him. You're the founder and the creative director of Ex Mondo. What made you create this brand and what is your mission for it? Yeah, so another huge part of my life um, when I was working at my father's salon was I was just fascinated by hair products. Like we would have just shelves like from, from floor to ceiling of just hair products. And I we would get new ones like every month or so or even more often than that. Um, and I would like sit in the classes and learn about the products and like what, what new technology there is out. And I just thought it was so cool that you could just create something that would benefit so many people um, and make so many people feel beautiful. And I remember just like taking home the products, like putting them in a bag and like either stealing them from my dad or like asking him every day if I could take more and more. And he was like, oh, seriously, like you have a <laughs> Like my counter in my bedroom was just hair products. Um, and I would like use a different one every day and like a different hairspray, a different like molding paste, a different gel. And I would just experiment. And I, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like some people gravitate towards makeup. Like my thing was hair products. Like I just, it was amazing. Um, as well as hair color too, but. At, at that time though, there wasn't as much like semi permanent color that you could bring home and you could do yourself. So it was a lot of like professional use products. Um, so it was more, I was more focused towards hair care at that time. And after kind of looking at all these ads that were going around in our salon and like we would have those like, you know, just display pictures and 
you know, anything kind of advertised in that hair care line. I noticed that like, I didn't really relate to any of them. Mm. Um, I didn't really see like me in them. I didn't see my friends in them. I didn't see like cool uh, people. I didn't see any diversity really at all. You know, like when you're at a predominantly white salon, you're not really seeing any advertisements for black hair. And I thought, I always thought like that was just a weird thing. Like, why can't we all just be good at hair in general? Why is it so segregated? Um, so when I create my own line, I really wanted to create something that was very inclusive, um, really showed every type of ethnicity, every type of person, every sexual orientation, um, people that were like me, uh, as well as just being really connected to the consumer and creating products that they actually want rather than what I just think they want. Yep. Um, and I always wanted to own it myself because I knew I could create, literally I could just wake up today and be like, I want to create this shampoo that, you know, gives you the most perfect curls ever. And I could just go do it. So that was always my goal. And that's exactly what I did. And now I get to just create products that I dream about. Um, and have them released to the world and people can have beautiful glowing hair. Why is representation important when it comes to hair? Yeah, I feel like, I, like touching on what I just said, um, I, I just feel like it's been so segregated when it comes to hair. Like you don't, I didn't even learn how to do black hair in hair school, which is just, I mean like, why would I not learn that, right? right. I, I didn't really understand that. And so when I got out of school, um, and I worked in several different salons over the years. There was one salon I worked at when I had just moved to New York City um, that was predominantly like just like a blow dry, blow out salon. And so I had a lot of black clients coming in and they were like, can you do my hair? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's try it out. And I had those women teach me so much. And I had a lot of um, um, Dominican women working around me as well and they would teach me how to like get the hairline smooth and and how to really pull on the hair and yep. how to get everything super sleek and smooth and at, at the end of um, my kind of career at that salon I was all the black women were coming to me only yeah. and like they, were, <laughs> they, they would not trust me at first and then they'd be like wow you're actually really good at this and I was like I wish I was taught this before um, because if I was, you know, I feel like there'd be a lot more inclusivity in the hair world and I think there'd be a lot more crossover and a lot of white stylists doing black hair and black stylists doing white hair and like, I just think we see more of that in the hair world still to this day. Um, and so that's, I feel strongly about that. When you hear the word beauty in the beauty space, how do you define it? Beauty is really about confidence to me. Um, it doesn't matter like if your hair to me looks really messed up or like, you know, it's not great. It doesn't matter if, if that's just my opinion, if you feel confident in it and it shows like you can rock anything. So confidence is like number one key. And even when I'm feeling like my outfit isn't super cute or like my hair looks like shit, I'm still like, okay, wait, if I just like put some confidence in this and like <laughs> a little pep in my step, um, people will not even notice how bad it looks. <laughs> Social media has played a big part in your career progression and you've used it to build clientele, show your work, show your products. What advice would you give to other stylists when it comes to staying active on social media and also being engaged with your audience? Yeah, I mean, consistency is definitely key with social media. Um, in the beginning, it takes a lot of work, you know, it's a full-time job and it's not going to happen overnight. And I mean, unless you're really lucky, but you have to go home from your full-time job and like post that picture or like make that TikTok, post that YouTube video, you know, you're, you're going to be working all night, but social media has such a huge payoff. Um, if you can make it work, you can make anything out of a following. Um, you can have your own hair care line, your own color line, makeup, you know, whatever you want. And that is so fulfilling. So you got to put that work in right in the beginning, that extreme, extreme tough work. Um, and then it just becomes, I feel like it just becomes really exciting. And 
I don't feel like my work is my work because I'm, I love social media and I'm constantly on it. So I don't even know. The lines are very blurred at this point. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm always just working 24 seven, um, but I love it. Uh, and then the other thing is just staying true to who you are, I think is a really easy thing to say, but it's hard to do on social media because you have so many people watching you all the time that you sort of like question who you are. At least I do for me, okay. for me that's true. Um, I you, you kind of read the comments and you kind of get tangled up in like what other people think of you. And you have to like really just not focus on that and just be exactly who you want to be because that is what got you to the place you're at. Uh, and just really not be afraid to like show the weird quirky sides of yourself. And yeah. people gravitate towards that more than just like somebody who looks perfect all the time. What does a day to day look like for you? <laughs> like, are you waking up at a certain time and getting, setting a schedule for your work day? Like, how does that work for you? Yeah, I work nine, you know, quote unquote, nine to six, cause that never <laughs> happened. Um, it, it usually goes from like, 9 a.m. to like, I don't know, like we'll go anywhere from like 6 to 10 p.m. or like beyond that. Okay. Um, I could just not stop all day. It just depends on the day. <laughs> um, I usually, so I have a couple of creative days every week that I do only social media. Again, only social media. Usually I try to, but it's always crossed over with X Mondo. Um, because there's just always things to do when you own your own company yep. um, and have several employees. So my two creative days, I usually wake up, I think of video concepts, I storyboard them, I, I work with my assistant and I we conceptualize the videos. I usually write like a soft script on the videos. Um, and then I answer the million emails. I forward them to the manager. I, you know, we, we talk about the deals we have coming in and the, the trips and the this and the that. And then I think about TikTok and Instagram and what I'm gonna post on TikTok today. And then I get ready, film a bunch of TikToks for the week. I take some Instagram photos and then I sit down. And usually like the filming part takes the majority of the day. Yep. Um, and then we have, of course, like the videos I need to edit. Like I have my editor send me back the edits and I have to do my edits. And then we go back and forth a million times. This is like long story short. Like there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot more in between that, but I'll, I'll, I'll end it there. Um, and then the, the other days are ex model days where it's just like meetings all day. It's just like, what is our five-year goal? What is our next product? What is our next campaign shoot? What are we doing for holidays? What are we doing? There's just endless, oh, hiring people, you know, yep. um, everything and anything you would expect. Um, I do it and it's a lot of fun, but it's definitely like extremely a lot. <laughs> For anyone that wants to stay up to date on everything that you have going on, purchase some of your products, where can they find you and where can they go to buy? Yeah, all my social media handles are Brad Mondo NYC. Um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, probably everything else, Facebook, Snapchat. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can purchase my products at xmondohair.com. Um, we have hair color and hair care products. So. Yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us today. I appreciate it so much. And I'm wishing you nothing but the best in all that you do. Can't wait to see like all of the cool colors and new videos that you have coming out. But until next time, I will catch you all later. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you, Robin.